booktube it's andrea and today we're going to do something we've never done on this channel before we're going to do an unhaul yes you've seen lots of hauls on this channel before but you've never seen an unhaul so you're probably wondering where the heck does she put all those books she buys well you've seen the book room so you know that there are a lot of books in there but i also have a bookcase in the living room and one in the bedroom they are getting to overflowing i've needed to clear some space what with the baby coming in so i've got rid of all the books or i'm going to get rid of all the books i'm not going to read again so I've got 15 books here to show you. They are all hardbacks. This is a hardback unhaul. I will be doing a paperback unhaul separately later. But I thought I'd get the hardbacks done so clear some space on the shelves. I will be donating these books to my local charity, one of my local charity shops, which is All Creatures Great and Small in Risca. They um, are a charity shop that support a local animal sanctuary over in Cumbran and they deal with like small, small animals like dogs, cats, budgies, rabbits and guinea pigs and so on so a very worthwhile cause we both donate and buy from that shop Paul often picks up CDs from there and I often drop books in <laughs> as well as other things like clothes and, and CDs we no longer want and various other things we could sell them but sometimes it's just more hassle if you just want the space and you want everything gone it is just easier to go and get rid of them that way so that's what we're going to do so these are all books that I've read I may have enjoyed them, I just may not want to keep them for various reasons, mostly it's space and I'm not going to read them again. So the books I'm going to read again, I am keeping. So the first book that I'm getting rid of is 2am at the Cat's Pyjamas by Marie Helen Bartino. This was a book that came in the Book and a Brew uh, subscription box. It was an alright book, it's not one of my favourite books, I'm not going to read it again. I would say read it if you find a copy but it's not something I want to keep on my bookshelf. I'm going to go through these quite quickly, you might have noticed. The next two are books that I really, really do love, and I really do love the author, but I haven't read them in a long time, so I'm unlikely to. It's not like my Terry Goodkins, which I read a lot, or my Terry Pratchett's, which I read a lot. Um, these ones I'm not. I'm just, I haven't read them for so long. I can pick them up on Kindle if I want them. Um, the first one is Chasing the Dime by Michael Connolly, and I think this is a Hieronymus Bosch book, I'm not sure. No, it's not actually. Chasing the Dime is a book about Pierce, Henry Pierce. I bet somebody lived there before him and he's got, or he's got a number that somebody had before and he starts receiving messages for that person. So t that tells you how long it's been. I can't even remember what it's about. I do like Michael Connolly. Don't get me wrong. I'm just not going to keep them. The next one is also Michael Connolly and this is A Darkness More Than Night. This is Terry McCaleb. Um, uh, Ted is the main character. He was in a, another book called Blood Bloodwork. I've got some more up there that'll, that are paperbacks, so they'll probably be unhauled during the paperback cull. Um, again, I do love it. I love the title, A Darkness More Than Night. I think that's a great title for a book. But again, I haven't read it for so long that I'm probably never going to read it again. So you won't have seen those before on this channel because I've never hauled them. That's how old they are. The next ones, you have all seen all these before. These are all, apart from two, these are all hauled books previously. Um, the first one is Emma Klein's The Girls, and I did actually enjoy this book, but I'm not going to read it again. So, yeah, I mean, obviously it's a retail, it's a, a sort of Manson family retelling without the Mansons named but that's th that sort of story and I thought it was very good and I love this cover I prefer it to the, the other cover just because it looks like an old faded photograph but that's just the photographer in me so yeah I'm not going to read it again so it can go Simon Koenig The Witness I did enjoy this book I thought it was a very good book I, pick, I picked this up for like 50p in a charity shop to start with or doctor's surgery so it's just going back to whence it came so somebody else can enjoy it. In fact, I might even take that down and give it to my dad and let him read it. There were a couple of other books I was going to take down to him. So I'll take that down to my dad and see if he wants to read it. Put that in a separate pile. The next one is Jill Hornby's All Together Now. Again, this was from the Book and a Brew um, subscription box. A lot of these are from there, to be honest. Yeah, there's a couple, well, two more. Two more are from there. Uh, oh, three more. One, two, three. Um, I think that's just because subscription boxes, boxes can be hit or miss. Uh, I'm not saying I didn't enjoy this. I actually really did enjoy the story. It's a great story. But again, I'm not going to read this again. 
My mum might read it though. So I think I'll hand on haul this in direction of my mum and tell her to give it to the charity shop or the doctors when she's done with it. The next one is one that was sent to me by Head of Zeus, and you can tell that because it's got a Head of Zeus bookmark in it. And that is The White Hair by Michael Fishwick. This is a sort of teenage young adult book about fairy tales and myths involving a white hair, obviously. Um, it was an odd book. I enjoyed it, but not enough to keep it, not enough to give it shelf space permanently. So, no. The book that started off this whole booktube journey is next and while I enjoyed the book I don't think I'm going to watch it and read it again. I've never watched the film either and that's The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. Once you've read this sort of book you you know what's happened, you know what's happened, you know what's you know the whole twist thing's gone so I did enjoy it though so I hope somebody else will pick this up and enjoy it really cheaply down at the charity shop. Two that you won't have seen before, both by Ian Rankin. I used to get loads of Ian Rankin books. And again, I think there's some paperbacks up there. And the first one is Dead Souls. Um, this, these are part of his Rebus series. But again, it's been that long that I can't remember what it's about. So if it's been that long that I can't remember the plot, why do I need to keep it? I'm not going to read it again. The same can't be said for The Falls. Again, another Rebus story from Ian Rankins. I do remember a bit this one and I did enjoy this one. Um, basically somebody finds some six inch coffins on um, Arthur's seat with some dolls in them. Um, there's links to uh, some modern murders. Then there's some throwbacks to the Burke and Hare murders of, you know, the resurrectionists uh, and so on. And this was a fascinating, fascinating book, but again, I haven't read it in like five, six years. I'm not going to read it, am I? Let's get rid of it. A recent book that I got sent by um, Head of Zeus was the, the Dark Isle by Claire Carson. Is it wrong that I'm giving away books that I've been sent for free? No. Uh, why? Because I'm never going to read it again. There are so many books from Head of Zeus that i I, I do want to keep so it's not that I'm getting rid of it and it's not that I'm not grateful that they sent it to me I really am and I really did enjoy it but it's one of those books where it was it's very good don't get me wrong it's a brilliant book but I'm probably never going to read it again because I know the outcome some books even when you know the outcome they're so well written you can read them again and again this was well written but not well enough for me to want to read it again Leslie Thompson's The Dog Walker, again, is one of those I was sent by Head of Zeus. This one was actually brilliant. Um, I really enjoyed this one, and I'm tempted to keep it, but I'm tempted to keep every single book I ever uh, get hold of. Um, it is it's very, very clever about this murdered woman. She disappears in 1987, and then uh, in present day, they solve the mystery, eventually, and other crimes as well. So, very good. I'd like to read more in the series, but... I, I mean, I am trying to be, I am a book hoarder, I will admit it. I don't like to get rid of any books, no matter how good or bad. This was a good one. But I have to face the fact we live in a three-bedroomed house and we don't have enough space for all the books. We're losing one room because the baby needs a room. We've got a book room here. I'm keeping all my Hollywood stuff. There's no way I'm getting rid of my Hollywood and Marilyn collection. Not ever. So you know and I've got a lot of non-fiction and my plays and stuff that I desperately want to keep so I've got to sacrifice other books for that and unfortunately this is one of them then we've got the Glasgow Coma Scale by Needy A. Stewart this is one that was free with the subscription box book and a brew this one I was not that keen on anyway so although I do love the cover the texture and everything it's a fantastic cover um didn't think much of the story so uh, it's just sort of like oh it just it's not even a very big book but it took me a long time to get through so yeah I wouldn't really say go and pick this up if it fell in your lap give it a go but it's not it's nothing special a book that you either loved or hate was The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware I got mine for 50p in the charity shop well I got it at Tesco's charity store it's a bit dinged up um underneath the dust jacket but other than that it's really good condition it is one of those books you either loved or hate. It's very, very odd because of the way it's written. And the ending is so rushed. 
and I think that was the general consensus that you had this long laboured slow part and then you had this rush at the end um, and it was just a bit oh, okay <laughs> okay so that one can go I'm not going to read it again it's not going to stop me from reading other Ruth Ware books that I thought the, the ending was odd I would pick up another one you know if it fell in my lap I'm not going to say no and the last book again is one of those books from Book and a Brew and I think it was the most disappointing one um, because the premise, the plot and the idea were absolutely brilliant but there's just something about this book that let it down and that's Raw Blood by Katrina Ward. Now the idea is good and it makes some sort of logical circular sense. It's the same sort of circular sense that we had in the Dark Tower series with Stephen King but Stephen King did it so much better um, in the sense that the ghost is the girl at the beginning. There, I've spoiled it for you, don't need to read it now. It was okay, but I was disappointed. I wanted so much more from this book. So, it has to go. I don't need it anymore. It's taking up valuable shelf space that I could be putting more Jodie Taylors on when they come out. Oh yes, or some more Terry Goodkins when they come out. Oh yes. So, I'm afraid it's got to go. So those are the 15 hardback books I'm unhauling at the moment. I'm sure there will be more in future um, as I obtain more from either buying them, giving them or getting them from publishers, which I do occasionally. Mostly it's Hedda Zeus and I do like Hedda Zeus for that and I do appreciate it. But I just can't keep every book I'm ever given, so, sadly. Especially as I want to keep my Hollywood ones and my his history books. So most of the books I keep are non-fiction. But so yeah, that's it for those books uh, for now. Um, I will be back with a paperback on haul at some point in the next month or so. I don't know when, it's just when I get, I, I've got to get the shelf sorted out. I need the space for something else. So I will be doing, it will be fairly, fairly shortly. It's not going to be a long time. I'm also rearranging, I'm thinking, should I put my Harry Potter downstairs in the living room with, um, you know, on the nice shelves, on display so people can see them? Should I put them in the baby's room? Because she might want to read them when she's older, but then I don't want her ruining them. <laughs> what to do it's a dilemma there are too many books in this house no there's not there's never too many books you can never have too many books i've got a tbr pile that is like huge and paul says i've got to get it down <laughs> and i keep buying the odd book not a lot of books i'm gonna say i haven't bought many books lately but the, I, I do keep getting the occasional one or two so if you've enjoyed this unhaul let me know do you think i should have kept any of these books if so tell me why if you've read them why should i keep uh, the Glasgow Coma Scale, The Girl on the Train, or, or Raw Blood. Why should, why should I keep them? Just let me know. By the time this book goes up, I probably will have done it anyway. <laughs> I might not have. might leave it till the weekend. Um, so yeah, just leave me a comment. Tell me why I should keep them. Or do you agree that, that, that you just can't keep every book you ever get? And uh, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I will see you again fairly shortly with some more bookish nonsense. Bye!